most workplaces have a set schedule to which its employees adhere to. For some aviation areas, such schedules are in such a constant state of flux due to manpower shortages or over-demanding flight schedule. This leads to working long hours and having unpredictable work schedules. This is Let's Talk About Flex. Yeah, and it's not the flex you think, like flexing on somebody else with your fancy clothes or cars. It's a, a, it's a state of limbo. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's fluidity, I guess. Fluidity is absolutely right. Uh, I remember when I was going through school to become an aircraft mechanic, my instructors were saying, uh, here in the aviation realm, you hear the phrase, be flexible. That's too rigid. You need to be fluid. And like, and I'm just staring like, what? Like, yeah, you need to be fluid because your schedule demands and changes so often that being flexible is not enough. You need to be like willing and able to do anything at any time, anywhere. I'm like, fuck, really? Yeah. If you, if you work, tw- if you work 12 hours that day and you go home and you've been asleep for two hours and I call you, I expect you to come in. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I didn't, I didn't understand a single thing what he said about that until I got to my first uh, job site and day one so we get there like 5 a.m because we're the new kid and everyone likes to do new kid things to you and i didn't my first day there i get there 5 a.m i did not leave until it was like 11 o'clock at night and oh by the way i have to be back there tomorrow at the same time at five o'clock mm-hmm. yeah so it's not like when the fluid fluidity or flexibility of your schedule it's not like oh you worked you know you worked six hours of OT today. So just come in six hours later tomorrow. No, no, no. It's your, your start time still is a hard, that's the only thing that doesn't change is your start time. (laughs) Yeah. Your leave time. That that's a different story. Yeah. And again, yeah, again, like, and uh, at that time there wasn't any set rules. There were more like guidelines, air quote guidelines than rules. This was because, you know, the job's got to get done. The mission's got to get done. The flight's got to get done. Whatever the case may be, whatever justification they say to get you to stay or get you to work that late, they'll use it. And and I've ran into some uh, instances, at least when I first started out, is they'll give you like a set time, like, okay, uh, five to four or whatever. But then they kind of give you like this little hint, kind of like volunteering you, like, but you can volunteer. But we, we're looking for air quote volunteers to stay late and help. And they kind of just stare at you like, you're going to volunteer, right? You know, you're really hurting, you're really hurting the team if you don't volunteer, you know? And that's another thing. They say some shit like that, right? Well, then nobody raises their hand. So volunteers turns into voluntold. Yeah. And uh, I've worked, I've worked some off the wall, stupid hours. Like I said, like from the five to 11 and then coming back again, uh, five o'clock the next day. And then like my, your, your break hours are in extreme flux because yeah, they ha- you have like an established break time, but then, oh, by the way, these guys can only do their flight or these guys can only do their engine runs or these guys can only be here to give you the stuff you need at these times. And they just, and they overlap where it kind of goes between your, your breaks or your lunch. And then you're like, well, well, and people are like, okay, we'll just eat, eat or take your breaks when there's not stuff going on. But sometimes uh, if you're dependent upon the chow hall, right? Say you're in a military installation, that chow hall is not open 24 seven. So you've only got certain hours that you can go and eat. And, right. you know, if you're in, typically in the aviation, right, you got mid rats. So it's usually just like a, a small food line or a pre the styrofoam box is full of predetermined food, whatever. And they throw in there and you eat. If you don't like it, then you don't eat it. And if you do like it, you eat what you can out of it and move on with your life. But um, yeah, so sometimes they say the fluidity, but, you know, they also, you know, just be be fluid, you know, show up when we need you, be here, support the mission, right? And do all those kind of things. That's how they get they get your ego with it. The mission, the mission, the mission. But right. but it's a training flight. Like, I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't give right. a damn or- about no training flight. But but then it's not just you that it's being affected, right? It's your family and it's your life outside of work. And if you have any life outside of work, oftentimes that gets you, you start pushing that stuff to the side and until you get to the point where you're like me and you can't start pushing stuff to the side anymore. And so then you're working those hours and then you're going, Okay, well, I guess that what's getting cut is sleep. And so you just sleep a lot less and get up at the normal time so you can get all these other things done that you need to do and still go back to work on time. And then, you know, you do that for a few weeks and then you 
find yourself like the the body aches and pains don't go away. They they stay with you at that point. <laughs> right. And that just and that just adds to the hate and fuel that you have already. And like then you then you know, it starts to show in your work, it starts to show in your face. And then someone just kind of like gives you like that sarcastic poke, like, well, what are you so mad about today? Like, excuse me? <laughs> and that's when you knife hand them into oblivion. Right. Keep stepping, Billy. Uh, you you yeah. don't want none of this heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I was saying, like you were saying, uh, you, you start getting angry and stuff. But like what one thing I noticed for me specifically, or a few things for me sp- specifically was that the body aches and pains. Um, I started getting like, like above my knees. And usually like those, like they weren't, those pains weren't going away. And those are only if, if you get them from like hard training or you, you hurt yourself somehow, but these were just like normal aches from just being on your feet for 18 hours out of the day type thing. And, um, and then the next thing was, is that I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine. So I usually only have one cup of coffee a day. I don't drink energy drinks. I, you know, I don't, uh, I don't do a lot of stuff you know, those five hour energies or whatever. I don't, I don't drink those. I'll just have one cup of coffee with a little half and half in it. And that usually gets me through the day. Well, recently I've been hammering down uh, two cups of coffee and then I'll drink like a monster and a half at work and I'm still falling asleep at the wheel driving home. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and then, and then another side, like was out in the hangar the other day, talking, uh, talking shit with a couple of guys. And there's one of the uh, older uh, technicians out there. And he said something and I, I fired back at him pretty quick. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, you and I are pretty much the same age. And I was like, what? And I said, how old are you? And he goes, I'm 50. And I was like, well, how old do you think I am? He's like, you got to be at least 45 to 50, dude. And I was like, I'm 33. You know what I mean? He was like, oh my God, he didn't believe me. I had to pull out my license and show him. And he was, he just looked at me and he goes, I'm real sorry, man. I said, well, not half as sorry as I am. I get apparently my old ass, all the gray and the beard and the hair. It, you know, it reminds me of those memes where it says, it says everybody talks about how stressful an aircraft maintainer's life can be. I'm 23 and feel fine, but it's like some 80 year old dude in a wheelchair, you know, in the meme. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like that's, that's how, that's how it literally felt. So, so those are the three things for me is that apparently I look old as hell now and <laughs> caffeine doesn't do anything for me anymore. And, uh, the aches and pains. Yeah, most definitely. And just going, going on to what you're saying about the caffeine. Um, I've, I've noticed a lot of individuals that the caffeine doesn't do anything for them. So they start taking pre-workouts. This was when like, oh, yeah, no explode was starting to be a thing. And then C4 and then C4. jacked or Jack 3D. So they start mixing that in instead of taking energy drinks because they all they do is give them a sugar high for like five, 10 minutes and then it dies out. So they start taking the pre-work on and you could see it in their face, like all the blood rushing because their faces yeah. are, are starting to flush. I'm like, holy shit, bro. Like, and their pupils not- are super dilated. <laughs> right? right? It was like, what's the next step after this dude? Meth? you know? <laughs> Coke, uh, yeah, meth and cocaine, I guess. I don't know. Like that's... It's a gateway, I suppose. But like you said, uh, that's funny. I was just talking to one of our uh, mechs the other night. He's like, man, I'm I'm really dragging ass right now. I was like, well, maybe go get a cup of coffee. He's like, dude, I already had three on the way to work, you know, or three before I came to work. And he's like, uh, I've already had one monster since I've been here. I'm about to go crack open another one. He goes, it might be a four scoops uh, pre-workout kind of night. And I was like, on top of all that? <laughs> right? <laughs> like, four dude, you're going to die. God. Your heart's going to explode. Shit. Yeah. That's when you can... Uh, taste colors you know what i mean <laughs> right i can smell sound <laughs> <laughs> Speak. i can see him i can see sound speaking of that right so um i remember when the energy drink i say this loosely energy drink red line came out i know if you, i don't know if you heard of it oh yeah yeah so when red Li- uh, red line first comes out right and everyone's like all the rave like yeah dude this thing gets me going through work and it really uh it really helps me focus and all this because I'm tired. I'm like, okay, let's give this a, sh- a try, right? Because I'm tired of shit myself. Mm-hmm. When I see the drink, I'm thinking like a soda or something or like some pre-workout shake because it kind of looked like a pre-workout shake, but it pours like cough syrup and it kind of and it kind of tastes that way too. And I didn't read this. There's a, di- uh, there's a disclaimer on the bottle that says, if it, this is your first time, do not drink more than half. I didn't read it. And so here's my stupid as I down it because I'm tired of shit and I want that, that caffeine hit. I down the whole thing and I swear to God, like everything was like slow motion. Uh, like in that, what's that one movie with the squirrel uh, over the hedge or something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Where they give him a soda and then, and then he sees like everything in slow motion because he's going so fast. <laughs> I was thinking like, what's the, is it Limitless? Where he, 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 
he takes that pill and he just goes all over the place and everything's kind of slowing down around him, but he's moving a little quicker, you know, type thing. Yeah. So that was, that? yeah. Yeah. That was, so that was me around. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> but it but wasn't the crash like, it's real. The crash is super real. Yeah. And then, and then, so before the crash happened, you're feeling so fast that everything else around you looks slow. So then you start getting mad. Like, why the fuck is everybody going slow? And it's not that they're going slow. You're just you're just processing shit so super fast because you're on such a caffeine high. Because you're on speed, essentially. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> right? It's like um like that one scene in in Justice League when the Flash is like trying to zoom around and then here's Superman like all slow motion watching him do it. <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> it's like I am so fast. Like wait, he can see me. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then a- after that point, right, you start getting the ir- irritability. And you're just getting real agitated because everything seems slow. And then you start getting the crash. And then everything just feels like death at that point. Like, oh my God, it, it hurts to blink. It hurts to blink my eyes. <laughs> like the worst legal come down ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, it's the worst. Um, I remember I did something similar. God, it would have been whenever I was working for that same coffee chain. And I remember I got... Um, he i had two 20 ounce cold brews and i had a red bull right afterwards and i was standing on the fucking ceiling man but i'll tell you (laughs) what when i came when when that shift was over and i wasn't focusing on anything i i slept hard right (laughs) i was done right I guess that's the one good thing about about working like that, though, is the sleep afterward. like you know you're just gonna tank for 10 straight hours you know what i mean Right. So my family used to do that as a joke to me because they know like when I when I visit or I sl- or uh, they have me over, I, I would sometimes pass out because I'm just that tired from the night prior or day prior. And they would mess with me like how you would mess with a person who passed out drunk in their house. Mm-hmm. Like they'll like put stuff on my on my face or they'll they'll like kind of prop me up to look all stupid. And I would not know that they did a single thing until they showed me pictures. Like, look what you did. Like motherfuckers <laughs> and you didn't re- you, i mean you didn't move for any of it and like for me i'm a light sleeper but like just like like these past two nights right just out of out of pure exhaustion i didn't hear anything and it, when i went down i went down yeah and i just sat down on the couch last night just for five minutes right and the wife was talking to me and, and i then next thing you know i wake up the kids wake me up and i'm like well where am I? You know, and I looked, I was like, where's, where's mommy at? And they're like, I don't know. We were kind of wondering if you knew where she was at. So I texted her. I was like, Hey, where you at? She's like, Oh, I left to go get food. I was like, Oh, <laughs> holy cow. It's gone. Right. Completely gone. Well, good thing there wasn't a fire because we all would have died. <laughs> oh, I know. Right. That's the most dangerous thing. I was like, uh, it's a good thing. There's no candles left burning. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, oh, just, man. it's crazy, man. Um, but, but, What's worse is the people demanding these kind of schedules are not the same people who are also working these schedules. Now, I know you get a few people in management or higher up in the in the ranking um, that they'll hang out, right? They'll or they'll adjust their schedules accordingly. Instead of coming in on days, they might come in at midday and then stay a little bit into the evening just to show face and, you know, be I'm air quoting here one of the team. Um, but but oftentimes the management's like, yep, we, we all just need to be fluid and do what's best for the program. And then then they go home. Right. And they're not uh, the ones being suffered. You're the, not the ones suffering through it. And, you know, like one of the other ones on the floor, are like, well, well, there needs to be some schedule changes. You know, maybe we need to move some people around and, and work some different schedules. And they're like, oh, OK, sounds good. Everybody's on 12 hour shifts now. Yeah. What? That, no, yeah. that's not the that's not what we were saying. We were meant like. Okay, we got a first and second shift, but then we only have sw- swings or third shift part way through the week. But we're only flying, you know. Right now, the flights are only happening on the weekends, so swings is always getting screwed over because and, and day shift because then swings has got to work crazy hours throughout the night to make sure that flight's ready for the first of the next day. But meanwhile, swings is at home enjoying their sweet ass four days off, you know. Yeah, and you're like, this is cooked, man. Like we need to. Adjust it. I said, why don't we do like a do like a four ten schedule for everybody? And you got Monday through Thursday first and second shifts uh, crew. And then you got a Thursday through Sunday first and second shift crew. Then you got all the coverage in the world. And if you have to work overtime, it's only going to be like two hours. Yeah, it's not going to be it's not going to be four or five or whatever else. It's only two if you have to work overtime. 
Right. Let, let, let me just stop you there, MVP, because that's too much sense and we don't got the budget for that. <laughs> I I know. And I'm like, I even, I even told it talking about budget. I even was trying to sell it to him. Like you'll save money. You'll save money. Cause if this is the normal working hours for the weekend, you know, the Thursday through Sunday crew, you're not paying a bunch of other people overtime. You're just paying straight regular time. And you're like, no, no, no. They're like, well, we'll, we'll consider it. But it, like anything with program management, you got to bring the idea to them and then wait three to six months. And then they'll come back out and be like, we're going to do this now. What a great idea we had here in management. And they're all high-fiving each other and jerking each other off and whatever else. And like, <laughs> like oh, good thing you guys came up with it. Oh, fearless leaders. Thank, thank you for your wisdom. Right. <laughs> You're so great. <laughs> I bow to your, your awesomeness. Yeah. And that's what you got to do sometimes, right? You got to, you got to grease the pole a little bit. Like, okay. Uh, yes. You're so awesome. You know, you know what I mean? Like, oh, now, now, going back to what you said about uh, the management, like they'll, or any kind of leader, they'll set the schedules, but they won't show up themselves. I had this one example of an individual. He would set the schedules like, okay, everybody, we're working, we're doing weekend work, or we're doing this 12 on, 12 off, or 16 on, four off, whatever the case may be. And so he, he'll kind of, he'll put it out there like, this is what it's going to be. This is what it's going to come to. And then... Right when they're about to execute, he start he kind of waves at everybody like, "All right, everybody, have a great day at work. I'm gonna go fuck off on my my thousand couple thousand dollar boat and fucking like go fuck yourself." You know, <laughs> like, yeah. Are you serious, bro? Like, you're just gonna openly say what you're gonna do for your weekend while we here get to slave away and build the pyramid or some shit? Like, and then you get to take all the credit for when 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 it's success, or you get to punish us all if it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't actually happen, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the at least, at the very least, we get it. If you're being insensitive or that's how you feel, it should be managed. At least show up for five, 10 minutes, drop off like a dozen donuts and then dip out. Like just right, something. Yeah. Bring in breakfast burritos for everybody, whatever, you know, like do something. Now, I will say to give credit where credit's due, this most current program that I'm on, uh, their management has been the most um, accommodating. Like, hey, if we're, if you guys are working 12s, we're working 12s. And if you're, you know, if we got, you know, events happening off of out of, out of what I'll say a normal schedule rotation or whatever, then uh, we'll adjust ourselves accordingly and be there for at least they might not stay for the entire night, but they'll be there for at least half of it. And they sometimes do bring donuts or like they'll they'll go and drop like we have like a whole snack bar area and they'll go drop. You know, they'll go drop 50 bucks in there and like sodas are only like, you know, 50 cents a piece and candy bars. Whatever. They'll go drop like 50 bucks in there and be like, hey, you know, snacks are on me tonight or 100 bucks in there. You know, get, get whatever you want out of there type thing. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's real cool. You know, and yeah. then that goes to show like, you know, if uh, if you at least show you care, then the work, then the flexing and the fluidity of the hours, it, it's a little bit more numbing. But when you just blatantly like, all right, everybody have fun as you go grab the keys to your boat or you or you like kind of like fan yourself with your plane ticket and like, thanks, bro. Like it, it makes me want to work for you all the harder. <laughs> like, you know, say be fluid with the schedules all week long. It'll be normal schedules. And you're like, hey, you know, what's the status of this? Are we getting this part? This and that and the other. We got these engineering drawing updates. No, 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 no. And then. And then right before close of business on Friday, boom, we got all this stuff. So we're going to have to work through the night to get it accomplished so we can make the uh, uh, the Saturday event. And you're like, well, I thought we already canceled the Saturday event because we didn't have the parts. Well, well, we got them now. So let's do our best to make sure it gets gets there and meets the meets the scheduled time. Right. That's not how this is supposed to work, though. You know, like we sat there with our thumb on our ass for four or five days. And now all of a sudden, like poor planning on your part doesn't warrant emergency on my end. But right. There you are, you know, running around, fire, fire, trying to put it all out and right. make it happen. Right. And uh, I think we've mentioned that uh, so many times. I mean. Well, and a, a lot of management, too, kind of veering off the schedule, but I guess they're kind of with the subject, but kind of. Oftentimes, management, um, they play on your your emotions or your heartstrings or your or your mindset to want to do a good job and to... Um, you know, make sure things happen on a timely manner and see the program success. And I think they, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they, they kind of, uh, I can't think of the word, but anyways, they, they, they use that to their advantage, right? They use, they play you against yourself, so to speak. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Cause I, I've seen that happen a lot of times 
too many times. Matter of fact, and then extort extorts the word. Sorry. There you go. That's it. <laughs> you know, and they, so like you were going, like the schedule has kind of been consistent. It's either hit and miss or it's been kind of onesies and twosies. And then all of a sudden, like everything's due within the next three days. So we're like, Hey guys, it would really be beneficial to the team if you come and volunteer for this weekend work so we can catch up and do the, do the thing to get the thing done. I'm like, wait a minute. And then, and then, and then it goes, like you said, with the heartstrings and the, and your character to want to get stuff done. We're like, come on guys. If uh, we don't hit the finish line, then it's going to look bad on all of us as a whole. And just say all kinds of heartstringy shit to make it feel like it's your fault for not getting it done. Yep. And, and then that's when we run into the bullshit. We're like, oh, can you cover, I know it's, it's past your work hours, but can you cover this shift? Cause so-and-so, um, didn't want to come in or oh, we yeah, need, so we need to call it out. Yeah. Or we need the heavy hitters on on this shift as well, you know. And it's like that, that's a big one when you said the heavy hitters. They use that like to make it sound like you're one of the critical essential pieces. Right. Like this program no doesn't doesn't exist without you being here. And then a lot of people like got that big ego trip off of that. And like hell yeah, it doesn't. And then they, but you know, congratulations, you played yourself. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No, in some cases, right? Like you just have such a, a shortage amount of people that there's really no other way to to bend. So it's like, okay, man, like we have we got tasked out for this one way or another, either be it our fault or, or the the task itself. And so we gotta we gotta play the schedule in such a way so we fill these gaps. And then we're just like, fuck. Okay, I guess I, I guess sleep is on the back burner today or this week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just be like, okay, well, we gotta do what we gotta do to. To, to make it happen. Uh, another thing I've noticed is, especially in this past year, I'm sure a lot of our listeners probably can attest, but the whole pandemic thing, right? The whole pandemic thing. So initially at the beginning of the pandemic, people were like, a lot of people were afraid before they knew really what was going on with it and everything else. But, you know, the essential, you're essential. We're, yeah. we're an essential program. And to to make it seem like, you know, we have to to make contracts and to to destroy the enemy and all that stuff. We're essential and we have to make sure these products get out the door, but then they can only use that for so long until people are like, well, wait a minute. It's not this, this thing isn't as bad as we thought it was going to be like, where is everybody else at? Well, they're still working from because they're afraid. I'm like, yeah, but you're telling me I'm essential and I have to be here. So what about some hazard pay or whatever else? Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Just be or thankful. You- we have a job friend. You're like, hold the, hold the fuck on. You're like, well, all these businesses are closed during the pandemic. Yeah. But you're telling me I'm essential. So if I'm that essential, throw something at me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or at least give us some safety controls, you know, like. Or or instead of not paying anymore, like, hey, we're going to increase your uh, PTO time accrual, you know, your personal takeoff time yeah. or personal time off accrual. Yeah. Or something like that. Right. And then when you say like, you're essential, you matter and all this. And then like everything's business as usual, like no, no change in safety protocol, no change in in uh uh contact exposure and all this other stuff like so what am i just the guinea pig for all this like <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, so, we're so gonna screw see me. so screw me and safety i guess yeah yeah and and then it's and then kind of going to the essential part of it all right so now you hear that you're essential your job hinges on this because you're essential so now you try to really show that and work harder so like they don't give a reason for you to get put uh put on uh the bench so like oh i'm just gonna i'm gonna work hard because if I don't show that, if we don't show that we're essential or, or the powers that be think that we're not essential, they're just going to cut us, put us on the bench. And then now my livelihood's in, in jeopardy, like how so many other people are. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and then that's when they really get you, right? Yeah. But then, like you said, that can, that only works for morale for so long until people get wise to that. And you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. And then you're right back. You're almost in a worse spot than you were before. Now, another side to that is, uh, okay. So, so maybe you have a place that's, being uber cautious. Hey, one person got sick and they call in like, Hey, I'm not feeling well. I've got these symptoms that are all associated to COVID or whatever else. And so management goes, okay, well, who are you working next, next, you know, in close proximity to, Oh, well, I was working with this person, this person, this person, this person. Okay. All well, you go home. Everybody's got to get out of here, go home until patient zero tests negative, And then you can all come back. Right. But typically, right. And in, in the height of things, um, that might be two weeks. So you're out minimum six to, you know, six people max of like 10 to 12 or whatever for yeah. two weeks, so you, like whole shifts get wiped out. 
And so then everybody's got to adjust the other two re- remaining shifts, adjust their schedules and move to 12 hour shifts apiece to cover, to make up for the lost time of the other one. Mm-hmm. But then after a while, you can see it's starting to be taken advantage of people like, <clears throat> Oh, I, I got this. And Oh, it's this person, this person. And so like all their best friends and shit like that. And then once they all come back, then the next one of the group is like, <clears throat> and they say right down their friends again, like, dude, we got people missing. Like, I think somebody was missing like 180 hours worth of worth of time over this past year, just because of the close proximity list and all that kind of stuff. And I get it that being cautious and safe, but at some point you're like, okay, that one person that's sick, get the hell out. The rest of you, you know, yeah. continue on. And if you're, but if you are feeling sick, then we'll let you go. But, but you can see people using it and getting that because they're getting paid while they're at home. Right. So they're not missing out. So that's, that's another, yeah. that's another problem. It's not just management. That's, that's messing up schedules. It It's also your, so-called uh brothers and sisters in the hangar with you you know what i mean like oh yeah. i've got the black lung <laughs> and taking that time off and screwing you over because because you got some guys like nah man i'm here to work i'm here to get stuff done i gotta make it happen and again using that extorting that uh, mentality you have and using it against you right yeah oh man i know so many individuals and that not just covid and Whenever you give like some kind of leeway, like, oh, you guys can take advantage of this. You guys, you have this if it's available, if you need it. And then you find some guys who find a loophole in it and then, and then really abuse the system. And then when it comes to you, the hard worker, or you, the essential worker, or you that just wants to do good, comes time for you to use it. They're like, it, now it's all these convoluted steps because of the individuals who took advantage of it. I'm like, God damn it. Like, can I, can I just? Like, I'm actually sick though. <laughs> Yeah. Or can I get time off to go do this? Like just, just one thing, this one day. And it's like, nah, homie, like we, we don't know what's really going on. And we, we don't feel that's justified for you to do that. Like, excuse me. <laughs> right. And then it becomes an HR case. And, but then, you know, your HR is mercy, what they, they and management have decided that they want to clamp down on and what they decide they want to let go. And unfortunately you got those individuals out there who work harder at knowing how to to know the system to how to get out of work, right? They work harder at getting out of work than they would do if they just actually did the work. But right. they know all the laws and rules and regs. So anytime it's like, no, you can't do that. And like, actually, per this, this, and that, I can. You can't touch me. And it's like, oh, great. One of yeah. those. Right. <laughs> and then, and then uh, certain areas, they have like a no kidding flex team, right? Like mm-hmm. a lot of guys just get burned out. So that, you know what? I'm just going to go work this flex program or this flex, this new flex schedule where it's like, I'm part-time, but I'm full-time when I'm called upon, kind of like the reservists for yeah. an aviation shift. So they's like, yo, this is a better deal. Like I can actually do whatever I want and do what I need to do and then just work when work calls. That sounds yeah, great. Yeah, if you have the extra income to offset the times you're not working because people are like, well, when I'm not getting called, I'm just getting paid a lesser pay. No, no. no. No, no, if you're not working, you're not getting paid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people fall into that trap because then that basically mm-hmm. turns into like the reservist or the the independent contract within the grand scheme of things. So like we're, we, we don't need a plumber all the time, only when there's a problem. So your your livelihood, if this is your 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 sole income is now it t- tossed in the air. I'm like, well, oh, fuck. And, you know, it, it seems good at the time because you know, you're overworked, you're overstressed, you're over everything. And then you go to this thing where it's flex, like, okay, I got all the freedom. But then you realize freedom's a, it's a prison. <laughs> and now, yeah, now you're I at mean, the... You, you think you have all this additional time, but then it's like, you might go six months without a call. And then all of a sudden, you're like, well, I guess I'm going to schedule this vacation with my family two days before the vacation. Hey, we need you to show up for this and this and that. And it's like, damn it. I didn't get nothing for six months. So I decided to to schedule actually something to do. And now you're like, hey, can you just push it back a week? I'm like, oh, no, we can't. So we'll just call somebody else. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Next thing you know, you're like eight months without work. And you're like, uh, yeah. I can't really survive off of four months worth of pay. Right. Or or then it's like one of those, like, it's either you answer or you don't get any work at all. I think you said that already, but. Yeah, like, I mean, it's one and the same, but that's, that's how it is. Like, if you can't make it, then you're like, oh, okay. And they're like, oh, you don't want to work? And you're like, I do want to work, but you haven't called me. You know what yeah. I mean? So I had to go find another job or I went and did something else. And, and like a lot, I was talking to one guy, he, he went without work for so long that he went and got another job and he was, and he'd been working in that full-time job for several months and they called him up and they're like, Hey, we need you to go on a trip. And he was like, who, who are you? <laughs> and they're like this, we need you to go on a trip. And he's like, Oh my God, I forgot. I even worked there. Uh, no, nah, never mind. I guess I quit then. Cause uh, I had to find another job cause it's, it wasn't steady enough, steady enough work, you know? Right. Now I've seen some individuals like that as far as the military is concerned, where like they, like they, they want the time off because active duty rung them out too much. So they decide to go join the reserves. Mm-hmm. Now 
I'm not knocking the reserves at all, but if your if your livelihood is dependent on your income and it's only the military, the reserves may or may not be for you. Like reserves are for individuals who like have a steady go to job. Yeah, they have a Monday through Friday. Yeah, or have like a steady thi- like thing to do, like school, for instance. And the reserves is kind of like just your like your added uh, bonus or your added income. And you're not fully dependent on that. But some individuals, they just go in their head first, like, fuck, yeah, I, I still want to serve. I, I still want the benefits. And they go reserves and then they don't realize just how little they're actually getting paid unless they're activated for something. And then just seeing them struggle and, f- and get frustrated with themselves and having that, that seeing how the units work when they're part time, like they start throwing their hands in the air like, this is exa- this is not what I thought it'd be. I thought it would still be like this. And then they, they get frustrated because like the reserves are like way more lax than how active duty guys are. But you kind of understand that because this is part time for them. This is like a second mindset for them. They got stuff elsewhere. So like they're not fully practicing the same stuff as active duty guys would. And then they get all frustrated and pissed off. I'm like, well, what do you expect, bro? <laughs> like, they're on a part time limited budget. And even when they do get called up, it's, it's going to be a ways out if that. So your only real work is like two weeks a year. So you you gotta you gotta kind of like weigh the pros and cons. Like, well, what's really more important? Is it the income I want or is it the time off? Because um, if you if you just kind of roll into something like flex or the reserves, like you gotta kind of have something going for you, or else you're just gonna find yourself out of a job and or twice as frustrated. Yeah, and I you know, and I think for me, like obviously, you know, at this point in my life, I still want the. I, st- I want good pay, right? I want to get, I want good pay and this and that. But also, my time off is super valuable to me. Having a family and everything else, and I think you can probably attest to the same thing. Um, I, you know, I overtime money is nice, but it's it's not everything to me at this point. The the time off and spending with family is way more way more important to me now. So then you got a lot of these young guys like, well, I want the overtime, brother. It's yours. I've 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 done my time doing the OT. Um, I'm not opposed to working over T from t- OT from time to time, but it I, it's not going to be an every week thing for me. You know, right. I, I want to have that, that personal life. Right. Absolutely. Because <clears throat> time is one thing you don't get back. Money comes and goes to everyone listening. Money comes and goes, but time, time does not come back. Right. You'll never get it back. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm going to quote the late great Tony Stark on this one is uh, no amount of money ever bought a second of time. I felt that to my core, man. Like, like I could get like, so much damn money and I can spend it on all kinds of cool shit, but all that time and money spent earning, it doesn't buy a second of, uh, of, of off time and getting it back. Cause like there's times where I, when I've worked and I'm sure you have too. And a lot of our listeners where you're on the go so much, so often, like you basically work as your family and your family is, is like a part-time job. Like, hi family. I'm here for the one day a week. And then you never see him. You don't see him again for another six to six days to whenever. So well, I think that that was at least for the States. I think that's been the culture and still is the culture to some degree um, that, you know, we, we as a people are hardworking and it's, um it's like a, a sense of pride or a sense of accomplishment or, or I'm uh, better than you because I work 18 hours a day and I do that six days a week and on my day off, you know, I still go into work to check my time card just for a couple hours and then I leave. And then, you know, it's like a sense of, um, like people, how do I say it? The people, people pride themselves in the burnout. Yeah. It's like a sense of sense of accomplishment for some reason or other. And I know there's a big, I'm starting to see at least through the social media platforms, there's a push to, to kind of like, why are we, why is, why is burnout the norm? Why isn't it a healthy balance or why isn't it like, Hey, you know, take vacation, take time off, take your weekends. Like you've earned those. Those are, those are yours. Don't let anybody tell you that, that you're a lesser employee or a lesser, um, you know, supporter of the mission because you chose to take that time off. Don't, don't let people do that to you. Take your time, take your time. Don't, don't burn out because well, I think one, a lot, one thing a lot of these employees don't realize is once, once somebody burns out, they show up still every day, but they don't like you get nothing out of them. Yeah. Cause then now they're just pissed off and angry all the time because they're just right. done. Like yeah. I'm here, like they're, they're, they're like, I'm here for the health insurance and I don't care about anything else. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you, and it shows in their work too. Like yep. they're, they stop caring about their performance. They stop caring about the quality of their work. And it, and then it kind of leads into bigger stuff. And then the natural response is to like, Oh, I'm a hammer. You, I'm a, I'm a drop the hammer on you until you get your, get your act right. And that just makes them burn out beyond the burnout. Like, okay, now I just care a whole lot less. 
because yeah, but you can just only hammer steel so flat. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Eventually, eventually, they're just gonna. It's just gonna resist. That's a good way of putting it. I didn't think of. That. <laughs> 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 or was that other one you mentioned some time ago? Like, uh, there's always two sides to a pancake or something. Like that? Yeah, there's two sides to every pancake. <laughs> a pancake, a pancake can only get so flat. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> so, I, I know we kind of dabbled a little bit onto like burnout and and the schedules itself, but that's really what it's about because a lot of individuals would choose to go off go to a flex route or a fluid route because they're so burned out. And then a lot of times, like you gotta you kind of have to go with go with the flow of it because a you know you don't know when your next work chance is gonna be. B you don't know uh, what the demand's gonna be. And then C like. Um, if it's going to be one of those, like, this is, this is your paycheck or not. And then you're like, well, fuck, well, I got to do something about it, <laughs> you know? Right. And that's, you know, I think, um, that's why people are so, the people really like, uh, 980 work schedules, 410 work schedules, or 312 work schedules. Because at least, you know, if they got to, if they got to work overtime, they still are going to get at least two days off, right? Whereas like the, the 540 guys are, um, you know, they, they might only get one day off. Or no day is off, but at least with the other two schedules, you'll get at least two or three still, you know. And I think that's why a lot of people are pushing for that. That's why I'm an advocate for kind of those. And a lot of people are like, oh, I couldn't do three twelves. I said, why not? Like, man, those are long days. I'm like, yeah, but it's it's three days, and then you get four off. Yeah. I mean, even if you even if you got to work a little OT, you're still going to get three full days off. So right. that's why I think it's such a a good route to that. And I don't I don't know what you guys' favorite schedules are, but mine are. At least a four ten. That's probably oh. my favorite schedule. Oh, I'm all for four tens. If I can work a three ten shift uh, on a night shift, that'd be freaking dope. That'd be dope. Yeah, and it's, and it, four t- That'd be good. Yeah, four tens at a night would be all right. Yeah, because I I don't know what it is, but like when you work nights, you kind of sort of get mo- a lot of your day back, even on the days you are working. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The only thing is, is like on the weekends on the weekends you switch back to being alive during normal daylight hours to be with the family. Right. And then you got to switch back to sleeping, sleeping during the day and being up at night during the week. But that being said, typically your swing shift and your mid shift are your busier shifts. So that's why people like to work them as well, because there's less management of the round, less oversight and it's more work. So you're just kind of, your day goes a little quicker. Whereas Typical days um, is when all the flights and stuff are happening. So it's more of like launch recovery methods, light maintenance here and there. But it also depends on their program because some are complete opposite to that. <laughs> so, right. I've seen some instances like that. And uh, going on to the whole flex and fluidity is when you have when you have such a shortage and you start getting guys who get who have to get swung around from one shift to the next. And sometimes it happens in the same week. Like. Your day shift today, oh, by the way, come in a little later because you're going to be working night shift or swings the following day. You work that for one or two days and oh, by the way, you're back in day shift. Like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> oh, I know. Like we've had, we, uh, there's a guy I work with currently and he week to week is on a different schedule. But like you were saying, there's some guys that are like, okay, Monday and Tuesday, I'm day shift, but Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, I'm swings, Thursday, I'm mids, Friday, I'm back to swings. And then Saturdays, I'm days because they were working like six days a week. And I'm like, all in one week, I was like, dude, and people can only do that so long. But then you see them after a couple of months and they're haggard looking. I mean, just haggard. Like They're like me, early 30s and look like I'm almost 50. So, <laughs> you know, right. yay me. Yeah. And and uh, I noticed a lot of individuals are like that is a because a they're single and have nothing better to do. Or B, they're just that kind of person that has that giant pool of knowledge and they everybody wants them on their team. Like, oh, this guy's super good. I need the MVP on my team. It's like, no, he's my MVP. No, he's my MVP, you know, whatever the hell. And then it kind of just be this kind of be this tug of war of justification. And then this other person just has no better agency to say yes or no. So he's just like, whatever, man, whatever you guys want me to do, because you're the one giving me the paycheck. So they just tug him left and right to yeah, whatever shift. Move around as they see fit. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's cool with it. And they don't even ask. They're just like, oh, he's going to be cool. He's cool with it. He never says no. But again, that person, you know, they they recognize that they do have the skill set or whatever else. So they want to be a team player. So they kill themselves for it. But I also look at those situations and say, nah, it sounds like we need to revamp our training program. Have this guy, have this guy work, pick a shift, and we move other people around, new people around to work with him. 
for a time to gain that knowledge. And then you spread those people back out. So you got a broader knowledge base across all shifts. That's, right. They just, they typically don't do that. What What's the first thing to get cut when it comes to budgets and that's training. And so they just, they just dog the one or two individuals for everything they got until those, until those mules can't, can't carry no more, you know? Right. Absolutely. And I felt that's been me for a quite a while, especially because, you know, going, going back to that carrier character thing where I want to get shit done. I want to improve stuff. They see that as an opportunity to like, well, here's one way for you to improve my shift or here's another way how you can get my program going. And they just tug you left and right until, like you said, like the mule just can't carry no more. And then they send you off to the factory to turn you into glue. <laughs> I agree. Uh, I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the resolve is for it. I know most of us and probably some of our listeners have gone to their existing uh, management in regards to schedules and said, Hey, I have a possible solution here. Let me, you know, let me put in my two cents in the ring. And like, Oh, gee, thanks. Thanks. Individual number one. Uh, but uh, that's just something we can't do right now. And you say, well, why not? What's the reason? They never have a, a really a reason for you, but they just tell you they can't probably because it's additional work on their end and nobody in management is going to do that. So, so find, find what shift works best for you and your home life. And uh, don't, don't let uh, the job burn you out. Cause then when you, when work stops being interesting to you is that's when it's, it's work to get up and go to it every day. Right. I would definitely say like uh, everybody's 100% replaceable. And no matter how much you put into it, they're never going to get full of it. You know, you're always, they're always going to find a way to keep get taking more. So the more you give, the more they're going to take. So you got to have a, like what MVP said, you got to find that balance where, you know, like this is my no go limit and this is how far you're going to take it. So, cause if you don't, they'll run it right to the fumes and you're gonna only going to be the one having the problems and they're just going to be laughing their way to the bank. Yeah. You got to You got to know when to say no. Yeah. Oh, no, man, we can go on a whole nother episode on when to say no. <laughs> uh, final final thoughts, anybody? No, I think I pretty much said mine. Don't let it burn you out. Like I said, um, find the shift that works best for you. Some people like days, some people like swings, some people like mids, whichever one you like, and it works best for your home life. Um, jump on that and try to stay there as long as you can. Um, but don't be afraid to take your time and uh, if you need it. Because that's uh, very valuable. And the older you get, the more valuable you realize that really is. Absolutely. Uh, Charlene, anything from you? Uh, more of the same. I mean, uh, COVID has really put it in perspective for me, at least. You know, uh, going from working 90 to 120 hour weeks in the summer to having a summer that had zero events. It really showed me how much time I spent at work and how much I neglected home life. And... Also, like just my own personal life. So, um, get out there and experience things outside of work, uh, and you will be very thankful that you did. Yeah, right? the world's a big place. Don't you know? Unfortunately for Shoreline, he was having those hot girl summers, and then he went to having no girl summers. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. Get and, out there uh, and experience life. Don't don't let uh, don't let work dictate your life. You know what I mean? As much right. as you can. Obviously, we yeah. all have to work. We realize Absolutely. that, but everything in moderation. Absolutely. And I would say this for guys who are in charge of schedules or managers who are in charge of people. If you really want to incentivize people or have them motivated to want to come in the next day, pay them for it with time off. Like you can raise their pay however much you want, but at some point the the dollar sign doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't add value anymore. Like at some point people value their time off more than they do their paycheck. And for most young individuals, that doesn't apply. But if you offer the time off, especially when they need it, they'll be willing to work miracles for you when you need them to. So there, that's my two cents on that. Well, and the other side yeah. of that too, right, is that you can work all the overtime in the world, but you're still going to get taxed like crazy. So you oh, might as well. Oh. Right. You, get, you, get, you get so much, uh, like in, at least in California, 10 hours of over, over 10 hours of overtime per pay period that bumps you up to the next tax bracket. And you're essentially going to come out maybe 150 to 200 ahead. And I think for most people like, that's not worth the time that I spent there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. And then to add to what six said about scheduling, those individuals who are in charge of creating schedules, just remember, remember that it's people, it's humans that you're, 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 you're messing with. So understand that, 
what what you're doing it doesn't affect you but it's affecting somebody and that will ultimately come back and affect you if they're having a uh bad time with it right absolutely nail on the head all of it we like to thank our patrons for supporting our show and allowing us to keep producing episodes bring on guests and keep shoreline ever the happy to produce our show with special thanks to erica lamont chris hawkins stephanie boltman jenny dignan ryan frushauer daniel schubert and Steven Shivers. Thank you all, our patrons, so much for all your support and again, your patronage. If you have ideas, topics, or stories for the show, or you would like to be a guest on the show, visit cancelformaintenance.com and drop us a line on our contact us section. We will do whatever we can to get you and or your ideas onto the show. Check out our sponsor, Rockwell Time, for all sorts of outdoors and sporting apparel such as watches, safety-rated sunglasses, and snowboarding goods. Visit rockwelltime.com, use code CX4MX, and save 10% off your purchases. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash cancel for maintenance. Patronage, again, allows us to continue making episodes and maintain our gear. Patrons also get exclusive perks such as access to our Discord and discounts to our upcoming merch.